Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, we are exploring the relationship between intuition and neuroticism. So with my personal test, I'm able to get access to thousands and thousands of people's answers and unique ways of exploring personality and the cognitive functions. Because of this, I'm also able to compare and see how an intuitive scores in one dichotomy compared to a sensory type. By looking at these numbers, I can see that intuitives are on average more inclined to being neurotic. They are more turbulent. They are on average more likely to doubt themselves. They question themselves more. They question their future. They worry about what's going to happen. They doubt and feel doubt over different options and possibilities. When looking at the scores on my personality test, I can find that the average intuitive is 24% less assertive than the average sensory type. That means also if you look at super intuitives, people who have an unusually strong result in intuition, super intuitives are on average 32% less confident than the average sensory type. So the more intuitive you get, the higher you go on the scale of intuition, the higher you tend to go on the scale of neuroticism or turbulence. Now, this video can help you as an intuitive understand your own response and your own feelings and your own uh, expressions and experiences with your own intuition, helping you become more healthy and more grounded and more confident in your ideas and in who you are. This video can also show you, help you emulate what sensory types do to be more secure in themselves and what you can do as an intuitive to also feel more secure in who you are. First, I have a very unique way of testing for assertiveness compared to turbulence. What I do is I avoid asking people direct questions about how often they worry or how difficult things are for them or how much they struggle with different things because I know everybody has dark days. Obviously any ESTP or ISTJ or ESTJ is going to have bad days too and if they take the test on a bad day their scores on neuroticism are going to be a lot higher than if they take the score on a good day. So if you catch people often their scores, their results and doubt and worry depend on the time of the day, their mood and their energy. So what I do is instead I look whether people are more positive or more negative about themselves. People that tend to describe themselves by their strengths, focusing on what they are good at. People that answer based on what they like rather than what they dislike. People who have a stronger idea of what they want in life than what they don't want. These people tend to be more assertive. So an assertive person is a person that feels overall more positive about themselves and reports about themselves in a more positive light. They focus on their strengths and they tend to underplay their weaknesses. They tend to believe in themselves and they tend to avoid doubt. So people that answer like this, they are the people that I classify as assertive. Now, if you look at the average intuitive, why would the average intuitive be so much more neurotic than the average sensory type? The reason for this is because the average intuitive is a person that deals with ideas, theories, speculations, possibilities, options, differences. And so the average intuitive is more inclined to doubt themselves. What the intuitive works with is something that is less secure in its nature than what the average sensory type deals with. So if the average sensory type deals with issues like practical concerns, social issues, fitting in, uh, connecting with other people, the community, the average intuitive deals with their future, with speculation about what they're going to do later on in life, with uh, uh, researching a theoretical possibility or analyzing options or consequences. And so the average intuitive is going to feel less secure than the average sensory type. While the sensory type can put down on paper or literalize what they are doing, the average intuitive will find it hard to explain themselves, their feelings, their actions and their decisions. Intuitives are more likely to spend longer time making decisions. Intuitives are more likely to go more 
back and forth. Intuitives are more likely to second guess themselves, to think in circles, to go down a rabbit hole, to detach from the world, to dissociate from anything that's happening around them, to uh, disconnect from the community, to ignore practical realities. That means the average intuitive also holds more, uh, has more fears that are, and their fears in reality tend to be more intense or more literal than what the sensory types deal with. So while a sensory type might worry about uh, what's going to happen further up ahead, they can still go, yeah, that's well further up ahead. And hey, I never know for sure. What, the th what an intuitive type tends to worry about tends to be more practical. Uh, and that means the intuitive is more likely to worry about, uh, you know, the, can I fit in? Will I be accepted? Will I be liked? Will this work for me? Is this, is this going to work out right now? And so for the intuitive, uh, the, to put it in these words, imagine you have a pile of work and you have a second pile of work. The first pile of work represents sensory work. The second pile represents intuitive work. What you'll see is the sensory type is constantly working through sensory work. They're doing all the papers on that pile. And the intuitive is dealing with the intuitive work, thinking about the future, weighing over options, looking over possibilities. <laughs> so soon the pile is going to decrease for the intuitive. There's going to be less and less papers for the intuitive to deal with. While the sensory pile is going to be more or less the same. That means the, the intuitive has a t kind of a mass or an increased amount of undealt with, unprocessed, sensory work and that means the intuitive has to deal with and has to worry about practical concerns that are very real and very important while the sensory type sits there with uh, yeah I've finished my host loan I dealt with this I've taken care of that I've cleaned my house I made sure to pay the bills on time now what about the future well the future is in the future, so already it feels less of a distance, it feels less important, it feels less real, it feels less like it matters. So, uh, overall, intuitive concerns feel less important than sensory concerns. Practical concerns uh, weigh more heavily on a person than uh, the questions about the future though also important, less so. If you look at it on a Maslowian degree, what you can say is the basic needs come first for everyone. And that means, you know, in these times when the world is kind of up and end, we are all more focused on sensory concerns. That means we are all more carried away with uh, whether we are going to be able to keep our jobs, whether we are going to be able to socialize with our friends and family members, whether we can visit our mom and dad whether we can uh, basically pay our bills. <laughs> so these concerns, they are a lot more intense. That means our ability to deal with and handle intuitive concerns, those are very difficult ones. So <laughs> intuitives are going to suffer immensely under COVID-19 and already seem to be suffering immensely during COVID-19, more so than sensory types. Intuitive types and sensory types can both have the same struggle. So obviously both can lose their job, both can fall out, both can uh, find themselves disconnected from friends and family members, both can find themselves suddenly with a much uh, lower, much more difficult economy. But the sensory type is going to be more used to these concerns and it's going to be better at thinking pr in the present what can I do right now to take care of this? How am I going to be able to get through this? What can I do to get around this? while the intuitive is going to feel that these concerns are more heavy because the intuitive is on average less suited to deal with these issues. So intuitives have a handicap when it comes to dealing with those basal level concerns and feel less fit for dealing with these concerns. What I can say to the average intuitive who is uh, going through these situations and going through these struggles is if a sensory type can do it, you can do it too. 
and you can learn to emulate the strategies that sensory types have and you can use them to appropriately deal with your intuition. You can have a sense of certainty about something that is in its nature speculation and you can have a sense of confidence and security in something that is in a reality theoretical. You can choose to feel confident and secure in that even if you are not 100% right and even though you will never be completely sure, you have gone over most of the options and you have looked at them more of the stones than most people and so you are able to make a more informed decision. Take some confidence in that even though you are a person who tends to doubt themselves a bit more than the average person, you are not less well read than the average other person. In fact, the fact that you have taken more time to study a subject, the fact that you've gone deeper below the rabbit hole trying to figure it out, means you have an edge. So what you're looking for is that intuitive edge, and so you're looking for the edge of being more neurotic. You're basically recognizing that, yeah, because I doubt more, I can be more secure than the average person. Because I feel less confident in myself, I can be more realistic about my skills and strengths than the average person. And that means I can make better decisions than the average person. Because I am more negative than positive about myself, I can also appreciate the good things about myself that I know I have more than the average person. And I can feel more secure in that these are good things about myself. So what you're looking at is basically you're starting to learn to look at your doubt from a second layer. So you're learning that there's a second layer every, under everything you do. There's a difference between your feelings, the doubt, the insecurity, your tendency to go back and forth, your tendency to go around the circle, your tendency to second guess things. And you're learning that there's a second layer underneath it, which means, hey, I've looked at much more data than the average person. Hey, I've thought about this much longer than the average person. Hey, I've had I analyzed this a lot further, I've looked further ahead, I've made a sharper prediction, I've spent more time visualizing something, I've developed a more clear idea about something than most people have. And so you're learning that below that there is a confidence you can pull from this. So you can pull from doubt, you can pull a sense of security from doubt, you can pull a sense of confidence from insecurity and you can wear that to the outer world and use that to be more positive about yourself and to find more reassurance and strength in who you are. Anyways, this was my video on intuition and neuroticism and if you have any thoughts about this subject, feel free to share them in the comments down below. Are you an intuitive and are you neurotic or are you an intuitive that has found a sense of strength and security in your intuition? If you have, can you share your tips and advice with other people? And of course, if you want to support this video, I always recommend you to become a member. Click the become a member button to join the community and to be a part of Zoom conversations, meetups or uh, future videos before anyone else. And of course, if you like this video, feel free to like and share it with other people who might enjoy it just as much. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.